Okay, so we're going to cover the last part of 2.1 and 2.2. So 2.1 is all about function, function notation, domain, domain restrictions, and something called a difference quotient. So before we get break the difference quotient down, um, in your my math lab, they're going to have you kind of take it in steps. So I'm going to show it to you the same way that my math lab is going to show it to you. So the first thing we need to um, just kind of review is functional notation and what it means when you look at something and you go, okay, this is what it means. So let's say I had two functions, the f function and the g function. Okay, so the f function is 2x squared plus 3. The g function is x cubed. What's nice about functional notation is it allows us to give it a name. Okay, so now instead of saying the x cubed function or the 2x squared plus 3 function, I can say, all right, let's use the f function. Or, okay, but we're done with the f function, now let's use the g function. So it's just a name. Remember, it's just another way to say y. So when I am talking about the f function, I know I want you to understand that I'm using this function, the f function. When I'm talking about the g function, that means we're going to use the g function, the x cubed function, okay? So it's just a name. Makes it a little bit easier to identify which one are we using. So when I give you this notation, you should be able to read this and say, okay, I'm using the f function, so I'm going to use this 2x squared plus 3, and it's asking me to replace the x with 2 and then simplify it. So replace the x with 2 and then simplify. So I'm going to take this, this is this 2, times this 2, square it, plus 3. Okay, so I probably should have used a different number, but that's okay. This 2 is this one, this 2 is this one. Okay, so I want to make sure that I have all the parts that are required for the f function. So now I'm going to simplify. Using order of operations, I do squared first, exponent first, so 2 squared is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, and then order of operations says now I can do, I've done multiplication and now I can do addition, so 8 plus 3 is 11. So what this says is, when my x value is 2, my y value is 11. And remember, the way that you're used to seeing this is as an ordered pair, when x is 2, y is 11. Okay, if I come over here and I say g function, now I know I'm using the g function, which is x cubed. This says take the x out and replace it with negative 1. So I'm going to take x out, plug in negative 1. So taking out the x, replacing it with negative 1, and then I'm going to cube the whole thing. So negative 1 cubed is negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. So when x is negative 1, my y value is also negative 1. Okay, so again, in, as an ordered pair, it would look like that. When x is negative 1, y is negative 1. Now, here's what you have to be careful of. You have to identify what, is, what you're working with. So in this case, since I know I'm replacing x with 2 and spitting out an, um, a y value, I know I'm looking at an ordered pair. This is not all the values between 2 and 11, okay? That's interval notation. So you have to be uh, um, aware of what it is that you're looking at. Here we're looking at x and y. It's an ordered pair. Here we're looking at we placed x with negative 1. We spit out negative 1 as your y value, okay? All right. So being able to read functional notation helps us with the difference quotient. So now I'm going to switch it up a little bit. I'm still going to use my f function, but now what is it asking me to do? Now it's saying take the x out and replace the x with x plus 1. Okay, so you're replacing the x with x plus 1, so it's going to look like this. Still using my f function because I'm looking at the f function. I'm taking the x out and I'm replacing it with x plus 1. So what's going to happen is I'm going to rewrite this where I take the x out, okay? Here's 2x squared plus 3. 
taking the x out and I'm replacing it with x plus 1. And now I'm, I'm asking you to simplify it. Okay, so here's where your algebra skills come in. This x plus 1 squared means x plus 1 times x plus 1. Okay, so you have to FOIL. x times x is x squared. x times 1 is 1x. 1 times x is 1x. 1 times 1 is 1. So I end up with x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus 3. Okay, so this x plus 1 squared is this right here. I came off to the side and calculated it out or simplified it out, working out FOIL. And now I have x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now I'm going to multiply the 2 through the whole thing. So 2 times x squared is 2x squared. 2 times 2x is 4x. 2 times 1 is 2, and then the plus 3. Notice I am not multiplying this plus 3 by 2. This times 2 is only multiplied by what the parentheses says. This plus 3 is outside the parentheses, okay? And now I'm going to continue simplifying. There's nothing else to add to my x squared term, nothing else to add to my x term. 2 plus 3 is 5, and that is what I get when I replace x with x plus 1. Okay, so it's still reading the functional notation. It's still saying take the x out and replace it with x plus 1. But then you have to simplify by using your algebra skills. Okay, let's try one more. Okay. So, again, functional notation, being able to read it. All it's saying is use my g function, take the x out, and replace it with h minus 1. Okay, so I'm taking the x out, and I'm putting in h minus 1. So it's going to look like this. I am cubing, because that's what my g function says, and I'm taking the x out, and I'm replacing it with h minus 1. It does not matter what's here what variable I use. If this says to take the x out and replace it with whatever this is, that's what you're going to use. And then you're going to simplify it. So this h minus 1 cubed, it looks like this. h minus 1 times h minus 1 times h minus 1. And you're going to just multiply it out. So what I'll do is I'll FOIL the first two. So I get h squared negative h plus a negative h is negative 2h. Negative 1 times negative 1 is plus 1. Okay, so I've used this, these two, so now I'm just going to multiply that trinomial again by h minus 1, so that's my third one. And again, just um, distributive, h squared times h is h cubed. h squared times negative 1 is negative h squared. Done here, now I'm going to go jump to here. Negative 2h times h is a negative 2h squared. Negative 2h times negative 1 is plus 2h. Done there. Now I'm going to jump over here. 1 times h is h. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. And now I'm going to add like terms. No other h cubes to work with. Negative h squared minus 2h squared, I get negative 3h squared. 2h plus h, I get 3h minus 1, that is my x cubed replaced with h minus 1. So once you get the notation down pat, it's just a matter of just replacing and simplifying. All right, so now we're going to jump to the difference quotient, okay? And I'm going to go back to just one function. We're going to go back to 2x squared plus 3, okay? Now, with my math lab, they do the, the difference quotient in parts, okay? So the difference quotient, I'm going to go ahead and write the whole thing out for you. It's f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, okay? So where this comes from is it's really just the slope formula. 
y2 minus y1 equals, or over x2 minus x1. It's just a slope formula. Where this comes from is if you have a graph, okay, and I have this point here and this point here. Let's say this point is x and this point is x plus h. So in other words, this value right here, this amount, this distance right here is called h. It's some random h value. This is f of x, this point right here. This point right here is f of x plus h, okay? It's just when I put plug in x plus h, it spits out f of x plus h. That's what this means, right? I plug in x, I get out um, f of x. I plug in x plus h, I get out f of x plus h, okay? It's just the y value. So what this is, is if I'm looking for, let me do this in red, if I'm looking for the slope between these two points, what I have is I have the difference between these two, okay, so I have x plus h minus x, and I have here my rise, so this is my run, my rise is the difference between f of x plus h minus f of x, okay? So remember, it's y minus y, x minus x, okay? So that's your difference question. It's just another way to find slope. What we're looking for, though, is we don't know what h is. h is a, can be a very small amount or it can be an extremely large distance. We just don't know what it is. So when we're looking at difference quotient, just think slope. That's all you're doing is you're just finding the slope, okay, between two points. So with the difference quotient, the way they're going to have you do this in my math lab is they're going to have you do this in parts. So they're going to do this first. They're going to say, okay, take the x out and plug in x plus h, okay? So we're using our f function. So 2 times x plus h squared plus 3. And now we're going to simplify it. This x plus h squared is x plus h times x plus h. Okay, so we're going to go through the FOIL. x times x is x squared. x times h, h times x. h times h is h squared. So we end up with x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Okay, and I, all I did is I just did FOIL. If you don't trust me, stop the video and, and work through it again. Okay, so 2 times x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 3. So again, this multiplying by 2 is only being multiplied by what's in the parentheses. The plus 3 is completely separate. Okay, so multiply through your 2. 2 times 2xh oops, is 4xh plus 2h squared and then plus 3. Okay, so this is when you replace your x value with x plus h. Okay, so that's the first step. Then what my math lab does is it says, okay, now take this, just double check, make sure that I'm following it through. Now take this and subtract off the function. Okay, that's what that means, just take off the function. So. We have, this is our x plus, let me rewrite it up here so that you can see it. So we have 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared plus 3. Okay, so that's when we replace uh, x with x plus h. B says, now subtract off our function. So we're going to come back here and we're going to subtract off our original function. Okay, now notice I put parentheses around that. Super important. If you don't put parentheses around it, watch what happens. If I don't put parentheses around there, all this says is subtract off the 2x squared. It doesn't say subtract off the whole thing. So this is saying subtract off the entire function. 
So that's why you need to make sure and put parentheses. Then this negative gets pushed through both. So I end up with 2x squared plus 4xh plus, plus 2h squared plus 3 minus 2x squared minus 3. So remember, you're pushing that negative through the entire function. Okay, so now this is the fun part. You can start eliminating 2x squared, negative 2x squared. Those cancel. Positive 3, negative 3. Those cancel. So all you have left is 4xh plus 2h squared, and that's it. Okay, so when I subtract off my function, this is all I have left. Okay, and then the last step is dividing by h. Okay, so the last step, so what's nice is we, we're doing this as we go. Okay, we're doing this as we go. <laughs> Katie, stop. <laughs>